If you've paid attention to the stock market or the news or read it lately, you may have heard a lot about GameStop and a short squeeze. And that brings me to GameStop. Check out shares of GameStop surging another 51% today, the record move driven by a retail rebellion. If you don't really understand what's happening or why, I'm gonna try and break that down for you in this video. Quick disclaimer, I am not a financial professional. This is not investing advice. And I am personally in a long position on GameStop at this time. So if the last time you thought about GameStop was when you tried trading in your Xbox 360 and 30 games and were just offered $20 in store credit and a bag of chips, well, some things have changed and some things haven't. Of course, mall retailers have been suffering a lot the last few years and took an especially hard hit in 2020. It's predicted that over 50% of department stores, which take up over half of the anchor space in malls, will close this year. So where does that leave GameStop? But the coronavirus pandemic has decimated the already struggling chain. Well, they are shutting down a lot of their underperforming brick and mortar stores to focus more on digital. Ryan Cohen, who founded Chewy, the online pet retailer that sold to PetSmart for $3.35 billion, took a 10% stake in GameStop in September of 2020, making him the largest individual shareholder. And then he increased that to 12.9% in December. Now Ryan and two former Chewy executives have seats on GameStop's board and are looking to turn their business model around. So if Ryan Cohen is able to make GameStop a bigger player in the higher margin revenue world of e-commerce, this may take a floundering retail company on the brink of bankruptcy and turn them around in a big way. So where does that leave us? Well, after hitting an all-time low of $2.80 in April of 2020, GameStop closed Friday at $65.01 after shooting up 51% that same day. It even hit a high of $76.76 during the day on Friday, getting the stock halted several times due to it moving so quickly. So why did all this happen? Well, GameStop had over 138% of its float shares sold short, making it the most shorted stock in the US stock market. Let's break that down further. Float shares are the number of shares available for trading of a particular stock. So well over 100% of these shares are sold short. So what does that mean? It basically means Wall Street hates this particular stock and expects its value to fall. The way it works is they borrow the stock, sell it, and then they buy it back after the stock value has fallen. The price difference between what they sell it for and what they buy it back for is their profit. So essentially, if they sell GameStop at $20 and then the stock price falls to $5, they just profit at $15. So if someone thinks a company is overvalued, they can make money when that stock price falls in value. Now, the thing with short selling is there is theoretically infinite risk since there is no ceiling on how high a stock price can go. So let's say GameStop went to $200 and the short seller who sold the stock for $20 now has to buy it back at that price. They just lost $180 per share. Now, if GameStop went to $1,000, then they lost $980 per share. So in theory, there are infinite losses associated with short selling. So the other thing you may be questioning is how can they short more shares than there are shares available? Well, let's scale things down for an example. And let's say GameStop issued 150 shares of their stock. A fund wants to short the stock, so they borrow 100 shares and then they sell them to an institution. Let's say this institution does stock lending and someone else comes along and they also want to short GameStop. The institution lends them the 100 shares and they go out and sell them. This means that there are 200 shares now sold short out of only 150 available. Over 130% of the shares are now short. Now that was kind of a silly example, but it illustrates how this works. It can be an endless cycle of borrowing and selling. Borrowing and selling, borrowing and selling. Borrowing and but the thing is, short sellers have to pay interest when they borrow these shares, so it costs them money to hold this position. So that means if a stock goes up when they expect it to go down, these short sellers are still holding that position and still paying interest while they wait to exit. So here's where Wall Street Bets on Reddit comes into play. So let's say you have a few posters on Wall Street Bets who are bullish on GameStop for a variety of reasons. They think it's actually a good value play and has a lot of potential as a company and as a stock to increase in value. So they post a due diligence on Reddit saying why they're bullish on GameStop as a company. And then maybe it's also mentioned how Wall Street is very bearish on the stock and over 100% of the shares are sold short. In fact, for a while now, short interest has been at or above 100% of the shares available, which is pretty rare. So this amount of shorts and then the bullish news on Ryan Cohen and even their digital sales increasing 309% over the holidays makes this a prime setup for a short squeeze. Remember, if price goes up, shorts are losing money. They had to borrow those shares at interest and so the more the price goes up, the more those shorts are getting squeezed out of their position and having to buy back at a higher price, causing them to lose money. With such a large amount of short positions, there's going to be a lot of buying when these shorts cover their positions. This large amount of buying increases the stock price and then it makes other shorts have to exit their positions by buying back as well, making the price go up even more. But since there are just a finite amount of shares, if the stockholders refuse to sell their shares to these shorts, the price can continue to go up and up and up. 
So back to Wall Street bets where they're known for taking an enormous amount of risk to bring home some tendies, also known as sick gains. You have thousands of retail traders who are buying up GameStop shares to squeeze these shorts and make some profit. So all these GameStop bulls on Reddit have clashed with short sellers, most notably Andrew Left from Citron Research, who has notably been wrong on many bearish positions in the past. It's essentially a David versus Goliath story with retail traders looking to punish Wall Street and profit along the way. And I'm here for it. Perhaps the most legendary of these Redditors is Deep F Value, who has been bullish on GameStop for over a year now and has turned $53,000 in GameStop calls into over $11 million. And he's still holding. So on Friday when the stock shot up over 50%, was that the short squeeze? No, I don't believe it was. The thing is, you had many of these Wall Street bettors and other retail traders buying up a bunch of these $60 option calls on GameStop. The market makers who create these contracts either find some other party to take the other side of the trade, or they themselves hedge their position by buying GameStop shares. But there aren't enough shares for them to properly hedge, so they have to buy back at whatever price they're able to. So this makes the price go up and up. In this case, by buying GameStop at any price and bidding the stock up, up, and up to crush the short so they have to cover, get it taken up. It's incredible to watch. So in turn, brokerages then margin call the short sellers, meaning the short sellers either have to exit their positions or liquidate some assets in order to satisfy the broker's requirements. So where we currently stand as of close Friday, it still appears 102.29% of the shares of GameStop are shorted, which means shorts have only just started to unwind some of their positions. If retail traders hold their shares and continue to buy up call options, this can put a significant squeeze on short sellers. So how high will GameStop actually go? Obviously, no one really knows. Perhaps the most pertinent example of a short squeeze is Volkswagen in 2008, has been referred to as the mother of all squeezes and caused hedge funds to lose $30 billion. The price was at $197 in September and shot up all the way to $999 in October. It'll be really interesting to see how this plays out this upcoming week. As I mentioned, I am long on GameStop and depending on how things open on Monday, I may look to add more shares. Even if a massive short squeeze doesn't happen, this could also be a decent value play if you think that GameStop could cut its dead weight from its brick and mortar and expand its e-commerce revenue. I would characterize GameStop as a long-term value destroyer. With Ryan Cohen aboard and an increased demand in gaming consoles, seems like there may be hope for GameStop yet. I'd love to hear your thoughts on GameStop in the comments below. At the very least, maybe leave me some rocket emojis. Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button on this video. It'll really help this channel out. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.